hi guys how is everybody today um so today i want to color these pictures this is by robert illustration you can find him over on etsy of course the links will be down in the description this is from botanica one now i am going to color this and i'm only going to use two pencils i'm using my fila pencils today and they're just two brown pencils for monochromatic um but i'm going to do something a little bit different than i normally do I am going to color this, and you guys probably won't see me color this entire picture. Um, if I do, it'll be like a speed color kind of thing. Um, oh, there goes that. Uh, but I'm going to do something a little bit different than I normally do. So this is like my catch-all. Got my kids' sharpeners in there. Got my sharpeners. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do something a little bit different that I generally don't do on my channel. I do it at home for myself, but I really don't do it on the channel. And I figure, uh, why not? I know I've had a couple people ask me, you know, they've heard me mention that I do it. And a couple of people have asked me if I would ever think about doing it on my channel. It's one of those things though, that, you know, when you do it for yourself, it's, uh, you can, you know, mess up and not care, or, or it's your style, you know, and sometimes when it comes um, to your style, it's not what everybody likes, and so I'm always just kind of hesitant, like, I don't know, I just do it for me, and it's what I like, okay, that's enough me blabbing, um, but anyway, so yeah, now I did print this out, this is on regular copy paper um, that I'm using here, because I am going to cut a lot of this out. And I don't know yet if I'm going to color the leaves. Like, I keep going back and forth, back and forth, and if I'm going to color the leaves or not. And for the flowers here, I'm just kind of coloring it in kind of quickly. Like, it doesn't need to be perfect for me. It doesn't need to be um, really detailed. For me, it just needs to be color. So let's grab this dark one here. Like I said, I'm only using 12 pencils. So if you have the feelers, I'm using number 12 and number 120. Oh, and if you guys can hear, that's my, my big old mini, mini pony here whining. Um, but for those of you who have asked, and I think I've answered most of you about the dog, is um so let my last video or it may have been the video before i'm not certain um there was a big bang and i said oh my dog nova said she ran into the door she is fine um as you guys know we moved and so she's still trying to get used to the, you know, the whole house and things like that. And I have a, uh, a pocket door that separates um, the living room, which is where I'm at right now, from my dining room. And so when I record, I have a little art room off, off the living room. So when I record, I close that little pocket door and I have a sign that's hung up on the dining room side because that's also like the rest of the house. Um, that says mom is recording please be quiet hoping that it would work but you know not everything works hoping that the kids don't come running in here screaming and everything else uh so yeah so she wasn't used to it and it was closed but it's not closed it doesn't close all the way because i ran a uh an ethernet cord from my dining room which is where our modem and router and stuff is to my art room here so there's a wire that runs across the ceiling which has to go through that pocket door so the pocket door doesn't seal all the way so it was cracked just a little bit and she was on one side i was on the other and nova is my shadow no joke, this dog does not go anywhere without me. She's normally laying at my feet when I'm over here coloring or doing whatever I'm doing in my little art room. If we go outside and I get out of her sight, she is running around like a madman trying to find me. 
So when we were separated, she uh, freaked out a little bit, and that's why she ran to the door. But she is fine. Nothing is wrong with her. She was just missing her mama. I don't think I've ever colored brown flowers before. And I picked brown because brown is one color that um, people don't generally use, especially to color an entire picture. Um, but I'm not going to be coloring the whole picture. I'm going to be coloring the flowers, maybe a leaf or two. I don't know yet. No problem. entries that I got so far for this are beautiful. I just got one in my email yesterday or actually this morning. It came through this morning. Um, so I had to post that on Instagram for the sender that sent it to me. And I seen some on Instagram. Um, Barb. She has some really pretty ones. I give her Barb, I give you props, girl. Like, I give you so much credit and kudos. I could never do those types of pictures. Those are so intricate. And <coughs> excuse me. And 10 minutes into it, I'd probably be cross-eyed. But yours turned out beautiful so far. So kudos to you. So yeah, I am literally just going to go around this whole picture doing the same, same thing over and over. And uh, again, this video is going to be, you know, I'm going to piece it all together, but I'm going to be doing it into a lot of sections <clears throat> because between the coloring and then the cutting and so the everything else, it's going to be... Uh, a lot of it's going to be sped up or cut out. So I, you know, please bear with me through that. It's just, I'm not going to make you guys sit through, you know, five hours of me doing stuff. Plus it's easier for me to make videos like this where I do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And, uh, well, I like that that one's darker than that. Anywho, sorry. Uh, it's easier for me, especially with the kids being home. Because then when they get up and they start doing their thing, I can pause my recording or stop my recording and I can come back to it at a later time and try to finish it up. We've been trying to get um, a better schedule going here with the kids doing their school from home and everything else. And it just, you know, there's not, there's just not enough time. There's just not enough time in a day for everybody to use uh, the computer and the tablets. Go lay down, girl. So, yeah, we're trying to make it all work. And it's kind of like, you know, when I start recording, it's kind of like getting on the phone. When you get on the phone, everybody has to, you know, ask you a question and everybody needs to talk to you at that point because they know you're on the phone. They need your attention. So when I start recording, that's how it is. That's why I like recording really late at night or super early in the morning. And lately, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been reading in bed. So super early in the morning is not really an option for me right now because I, uh, I've i been reading until 3, 4 o'clock in the morning some days. And so getting up at 6 is um, not, it doesn't look well on me at all. My family doesn't like me when I do that. So I read to 3 or 4 and I get up around 7.30 or so. And lately, the kids have been sleeping until about 8, 30, 9 o'clock. So that gives me a little bit of time to grab a, a quick coffee and get set up. Go 
I will jump over to this one. I just want these flowers here. That's why I'm only using two pencils because all I want them to do is have some contrast to them. Uh, just for them to stand out. Plus, I'm still trying to get back into the swing of things. I want to tell you guys something. I, you know, I've been coloring in between everything here and there very, <clears throat> very sparsely. And because of the move, because of Xander and his doctor appointments and his stomach issues, and, you know, we're still dealing with that right now, um, getting him the medical treatment that he needs to get, but between all that, you know, like, like I was saying, I haven't colored very much or like I used to, like I want to. Um, and my hands, like I feel it in my hands. My hands get tired a lot sooner. And I, I'm like, man, I'm like, why is, you know, this finger hurting or why is this part of my hand cramping? Or I get the cramps like right across here on the top of my hand. So, yeah. So now I've been, um, you know, printing out just sheets for my PDF, even if it's just something like this. And as I'm sitting here at my desk, um, not coloring, but, you know, taking care of other things that I need to take care of for my home, um, I do a lot of my work from my desk, you know, whether it's bills or helping the kids with schoolwork or writing out uh, quotes for Ricky or whatever it may be, um, I'm always trying to color something, always, just to get my excuse me, <clears throat> to get my hands back used to, you know, doing stuff again. I never realized how much um, muscle memory I actually built up until I decided to color again. Oh, I hear my truck just pulled up. Ricky must be home. Uh, until I decided to color again. And... I couldn't do it. Like, I couldn't do it for the duration. So I'm like, oh, so this is what it's like to be a beginner again. My hands feel weird and not wanting to cooperate or not wanting to go as long as, you know, I want them to go. So like I said, I'm just going to do a couple of these on camera, and then uh, after that, I'm going to go off camera, and uh, I'll just, I should say, I'll stay on camera. I'll just speed up this whole process. You guys heard that door squeak. It was Ricky coming in. Excuse me. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just finish, go ahead and finish this whole process off. If I do um, any of the leaves, I will use the same two pencils and just kind of, um, you know, gradiate it from light to dark. But I don't know, <coughs> maybe this one down, this set down here, I can do. Um, I'm not sure yet. And it might be one of those things that's like last minute, like, oh, you know what? Yeah, I really do need one. Because that's kind of, you know, that's why I don't make videos like this, because I never, um, I'm a, oh, I don't know. Do I need it? Do I not? And then last minute, I'm like, oh, you know what? Let me go back to step one and let me do this again. And 
I need this, I need that, and I'm really just all over the place, but we're going to do it. You guys are going to let me know if, you know, you like those kind of videos or not, and if not, that's fine. I'm okay with it. I just wanted to do something a little bit different. I might be able to finish this one up. And I am trying to, when I do this, I am trying to do a little bit of contrast, you know, uh, between flower and flower, some darker, some lighter, things like that, just so I have more stuff to work with um, and play around with. And I still don't know what I'm going to do with the center of this yet. I'm undecided. <clears throat> but eventually we'll get there and we'll see what we're going to do. All right, I'm going to finish this up. And Okay, so now that it's all colored, we're going to go ahead and move on. Um, now as you guys can see, it's all really just rough, and uh, there wasn't a lot of layers put into it. There wasn't a lot of depth put into it, and that's just the way when I journal, whether I art journal, junk journal, my multimedia, anything like that, I don't add um, a lot of depth, or I shouldn't say a lot of depth. I don't add a lot of like really fine detail where I'm layering over and over and over to make it perfect. Because I find that when I'm journaling, I don't know where anything's going to take me. I might put five more layers of stuff on top of this before I'm done. Or I might, you know, put a swish of paint over it and then all that work has been for nothing. So I kind of go and I just leave it with the basics because I can always go back and I can add to it if I wanted to. Um, but I can never take away. So that's why I just kind of do it really rough, really organic feeling. And that's just my personal um, style. Okay, so now that this is done, um, one of my wonderful friends, uh, who is also a subscriber, she's been a subscriber now for a very long time, she makes these glazes. And this one, I don't have the label on. Um, this one is just... I. Just, just says chocolate glaze on there but she makes these glazes <clears throat> and she sent me um a bunch of them actually and they're really cool and they they smell so good but so she makes them homemade let me see if i can lighten this up so you guys can oops that's dark i don't know if you guys can see that or not but like this one's real like a deep rich brown color and this one is more of like your sand tan kind of color um, but what I really like about these is because they are <clears throat> very translucent. So, and I just use my finger. Like, you can use an actual tool. I just use my finger and I get a little bit on there. And so the, the flowers that I get a little bit darker, I'm literally just going to take it on there and rub. And the great thing about these glazes is, and I can go outside of the lines because I'm going to cut this all out. They're shimmery. So when they dry, um... They're all, it's all shimmery, so I don't have to like add like extra glitter or whatever to it. And so I just rub it down there, and a little bit goes a long way. Like I'm barely putting any on my finger, and I'm covering almost the whole thing. And like I said, they smell so good. 
Um, now, the only thing that I will say about the glazes, and if you guys want to know where to get these glazes at, let me know. <clears throat> I can give you her information. Um, I'll put uh, some of her social media stuff down in the description if you guys are interested in these. Um, I know that she doesn't have an Etsy shop yet. She just makes these at home. and uh, But, yeah, they're a lot of fun. Like, I like using them. I think I might got too much on my finger for this little flower, but we'll make it work. But yeah, when she had, uh, when her and I were talking, and her and I talk daily, like we talk all the time. She is one of my best friends, and I uh, absolutely adore her. Um, but yeah, when she was in the process of making these, um, she's like, you know, will you try them out? And she had sent me, <clears throat> or she had made me up a whole box of them, and I fell in love with them because they're just so easy to use. They're so creamy. But that is the issue, is that they are creamy and they're like a wax kind of base I guess you can say um that a they take a while to dry and b you have to like if you wanted to be really uh, careful where, where you where you put it you might want to use like a, a q-tip or some kind of applicator to put on there because, see, I, I mean, I go outside the lines all the time, so it doesn't matter to me, even with my coloring. Okay, so then I'm going to grab my towel. Mine, it's my watercolor towel, but I just want to wipe my finger off on there. And then we're going to get this light one. And I'm going to do the same thing. The one thing that I will tell you, though, is do not, like, leave them close to, like, the heat. Um, they tend to the melt. Now they do, well, I don't want to even say solidify, but they solidify back to their original uh, texture, the way that they feel. But if you leave them where it's somewhere warm, even if it's like in a, on a windowsill, <clears throat> I would never do that. I mean, I, that would, nope, I would never do that. Okay, yeah, I really did do it. They get very, um, very loose. So then you kind of got to let them firm back up a little bit. So I'm using this lighter one on these lighter flowers. I'm just rubbing it off in. For me, window sills, like especially in the art area that I'm at now, um, it's just like an easy place for me to like put things because I have what's sitting right here in front of me. And so, you know, when I'm done with something, I'll just set it there because it's kind of like, okay, I might need to go back to that. If I set it there, I'll remember where it is and... All right, so we'll that in there. Now you can either let this dry naturally, um, or you can take a heat gun to it. And if you look, I'll show you. Wipe this off real quick. Okay. So you, okay, if you look at the back, you can. Well, it's, this is printer paper, but you can kind of see a little bit where it's kind of waxy, kind of almost oily coming through, but that all dries completely clear. Like, you won't even see that at all. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, that's a good thing. Okay. So, we can go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and speed up the process, and I'm going to dry this. Um, I will do it quickly and fast forward this part so you guys don't have to be um, succumbed to all that. And then uh, then we'll be back and we'll start. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to dry it. I'm going to go ahead and start cutting them out. And then we're going to jump on over to our next part.
Okay, now that we got them all cut out, um, and I did, I did cut them before they were completely, completely dry, so, um, some of them have some smudge marks on them, but I'm okay with that. Okay, so the next thing that I like doing is I have these containers, and they're, most of my journaling are in smaller size journals, um, I like the smaller size, that's just my preference. Um, so I get these, I think they're like five by seven, I think, I don't know, I buy them in 10 packs, they're like 15 bucks, 16 bucks for 10 of these, um, and normally I keep my e-stuff, that's what I call it, like me and my girlfriend, that's what we call it, is the e-stuff, because I have a really, um, hard time remembering, uh, how to pronounce the e word, the affirm, ephemera, ephemera. And I don't know why I struggle with that word, but I do. So I call it my e-stuff um, or just my journaling stuff. But yeah, this is what I use. And I normally sort them by, you know, color or sometimes I sort them by size. But I always keep a few extra empty ones. Um, so this way when I'm working on a project, I just throw my pieces in there like, okay, these are cut out. So I'm going to throw this in there. <clears throat> and uh, then I go around and I gather all the stuff that I think that I may or may not use. And I put it all in here. And the reason I do this, um, I have kids, I have a big dog. So it's, um, it's one of those things that if it's here, I can close it. I can snap it shut. I can walk away. I don't have to worry about my dog hair getting in here. My kids, you know, toppling it over and it's spilling out. It's all still contained. Plus it's all in one spot for me. So that's why I do that. And that's just you know, my little my little thing. So you guys do it whatever way you want to do it. So now I am going to go and uh, gather up some brown stuff. Hey guys. Okay, so this is my third day trying to get this video done, but I'm back and we're going to finish up our stuff, our flowers that I colored and move on. <clears throat> so I finally got my new um, mixed media, art journal, whatever you want to call it. My other ones were pretty much done, so I went ahead and got a new one. So this is the Strathmore Visual Journal, and I like the smaller, this is five and a half by eight inch. Um, I like the smaller books only because uh, when I use them this size, I normally use them for quotes. Um, I like doing quotes on one side, journaling on the other, or it's just for quotes. And that's why I kind of like this size. So we are going to go ahead and we are going to start. So let me, if you guys hear like a lot of background noise, lawnmowers going, dogs barking, whatever, it's because it's a gorgeous day out. I have all my windows open, all the doors open, and just enjoying the fresh air. Okay, so I'm just going to start with a very simple kind of background on this just because I just want to have fun and I, I pulled out a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know what I'm going to use, what I'm not going to use. Um, we're going to wing it, which is what I normally do anyway. Okay, so let's start with some, let's start with some Distressed Ink. And I want to grab my clipboard. I like using my clipboard. Let's see if it's, this one's not thick enough. Um, because if I go over on here, it's not that big of a deal. Move these out of the way. Push that up so you guys can see. Let's see if I can't do that. All right. Um, so let's start with some distressed ink. I like these journals. Um, I think the best because the paper is like a mixed media paper and I can do um, a lot of different things on this paper, including watercolor to some extent. Now, I always keep my pads underneath my mini um, ink pads, my applicators, because then I don't lose them and I know which color goes to what. So, let's get that, let's get that going. Push that clipboard up a little bit and I'm just going to start with the corners. I like doing the edges pretty dark. 
And we're going to go all the way around. And if it's not dark enough, I'll go ahead and add some more. And I just, on these, sometimes I get real intricate with the backgrounds. Sometimes I just, you know, leave them pretty simple. And then go ahead and start this here. So I'll come over here. And I go right over the spiral part. Just kind of get that ink in there a little bit. Okay. Um, and if you guys wanted to know, this color that I'm using is Gathered Twigs. Anything that I'm using today, I'll make sure I put down in the description um, if you guys are interested. So then let's get, let's see what else I have in here. Okay, we'll use this one. This is the Vintage Photo, which is one of my favorites. I have it in the big one. I just um, use up my little one when I can. And I do use a metal uh, clipboard because then it's really easy to wipe up. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. And I'm just going to do this inside pretty light. You're not going to see a lot of the inside if what I have in my head translates the paper. But that's always a gamble. So I just do it a little bit just to make it brown because we're, we're doing brown today. All right, we can put that away. Okay, so what I'm thinking is, we'll use some of this paper here. This is uh, one of those sleeves I got from 70 East Books. I, I keep everything. And if you guys are new to mixed media, I'll tell you what. I got this book. Hold on, let me grab up my shelf here. I got this book. It's 100 Mixed Media Techniques. Um, and like they have some, I got some of the other books, like I got some um, color pencil texture techniques. I got two of the texture techniques, um, but I like these books. And like this shows you, you know, how to make patchwork backgrounds. It shows you uh, different mediums that you can use, how to make your own stamps. Um, it just, the whole book kind of goes through a lot of different things, altering photos, stenciling, using things that you find outside to, to stamp with and things like that. So this is a really cool book if you're not, if you're new to mixed media or if you just want something else to add to your, to your library. So I think I'm going to use a chunk of this. I'll just rip it. Just rip it. And I think I want to kind of just do it kind of like that. I really don't like the straight edges, so I do kind of... Get a really thin piece off here. And it's a personal preference, whatever you guys like. And remember, you can't really mess it up um, because it's, it's paper and it's just having fun. And although it might not be to your liking, that's okay. Um, eventually, you'll get to the point where you can just kind of throw things together and then you end up liking it with me. Um, sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. Uh, but I do grow to like it. I'm like, oh, I remember when I did that. And Okay, that's just me blabbing on. So I think what I want to do is I want to use this piece of paper. I think I want to use this. and It might not be in that. So now I'm just kind of piecing things to how I might want them. Maybe like that. And I don't care to go over the edges because I'll just come and trim them all up. Um, my wonderful friend Kathy, she sent me this box of stuff and they had like washi tapes in it. It had stickers, uh, little like trinkets that you can put on them that are kind of raised. Like it came with so much stuff. It was so cool. And in there were these stickers. Um, it's like a little piece of paper with the paper clip on it. And, um, so I think I want to put my quote on there. What about if we do it? Maybe, maybe like that. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, this little flower. You can put the little flower there. Move that down some. And like for me, like I just kind of piece stuff in, just to see, you know, kind of where I'm gonna place it all. Um, let's see what else we got. I did pull out my brown Pasca, uh, a brown fine liner, and a brown um, at you spike a pen 
uh, because I'm going to write and I might do some embellishments. I don't know yet. Uh, no, save that flower for next time. Oh, maybe I'll add, maybe up here I'll add a little butterfly. I don't know, but it's going to be something similar to this. Uh, let's go ahead, though, and start with, I'm going to, I love my stencils, like I have, I love my stencils. So what I'd like to start with is this, put that over there. So I want to add, I think I can move this clipboard up. I want to add some texture up here. I don't know if I want it square like that. I kind of add a few more square. So what I'm going to do here is I have some, uh, you can buy like texturing paste if you wanted to. I just use like joint compound drywall mud, whatever you want to call it. I put it in a little container because I got like a tub of it. I just put it in a little container and use one of these little spatula thingies. And we'll just pick up some of this. You don't need a lot of it. Oh, I better get a baby wipe ready. I like this stuff because it's super easy to clean up. Get this out of the way. And I'm just going to kind of hold the stencil down, but I also want to hold my flowers down at the same time. And I'm just going to spread it on there. I kind of put it on thick. And then, uh, so I got a little bit of my flower, but that's okay. And then kind of just thin it out. And it dries pretty quick. If you put it on really thick, you can always take a heat gun and put a heat gun to it. I'm just trying to get into some of the spots here. And if you don't want to like do it as meticulously as I'm doing it, you don't have to. Because you can, your stuff will glue on top of it. So I'm just going to kind of flatten that all down. Get all that excess off. And what I like about the joint compound, and I know like with the texture paste, you can get the same thing, but you get different heights. If you don't like really smooth it all out, you kind of get that, you know, it's where it's higher and lower. And I like that effect because especially when you go over it, whether you use acrylic and you dry brush over it or you use distressed inks, it really doesn't matter because then it picks up the color. So I'm just going to do that. Move all that out of the way. Wipe that off. I'm just going to peel this off carefully. And this is pretty easy. I mean, like, I literally just wipe this off and it's clean. Wipe the front and the back. Okay, so that's done. Clean this off. Okay. All right, so now that all that is clean, um, I'm not going to make you guys sit here and watch this, so I'm going to mute you real quick, and I'm going to dry this up. If I can. Okay, so that went pretty quick, and I do keep a piece of plastic um, over it just to kind of keep it from drying out, and these I just got at the dollar store, these little containers, you can get them anywhere. Close it up, and I can put that away. So this is just to add a little bit of texture to the whole thing. Now I'll take some of this walnut stain, 
it like so. And I'll throw some of this on there. And I just kind of do it really quick where I get some of it dark, some of it light, just like that. Okay, so next I'm going to grab, set all this over here once again. Grab my paintbrush. I should say it's not really my paintbrush, it's my glue brush, and I just leave it in a, a jar of water behind me whenever I use any kind of glue or whatever it is that I'm going to be working with. And then I just have one of these cheap plastic palettes. Okay, so I like using this Liquitec basic matte fluid medium. It kind of works for, well, whatever I need it to work for. All right, shake that up. And a little does go a long way. I prefer just using a little bit, and then if I need more, I can add more. It's a lot better than having to throw away or try to get back in the bottle, whatever I'm going to use. Okay, so this is the piece that I didn't really like the way that it was. All right, I think I'm still going to put this piece here, and I'll deal with the other piece in a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to lube up the back side. And I like putting some down on here. Now, with the distressed inks, you have to remember that it is a, um, a water medium. That means, you know, it will move around. So I'm always kind of careful when I do do this to not, like, make it horribly smeared. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second. Okay. All right, so that's gone down. But if you watch, like I have a little bottle of water here. If I lightly spray it, just a couple dots there, and I dry it really quick. But you can see um, the watermarks it leaves if you're not familiar with distressed inks. So that's another, you know, fun way that you can do it. But you just have to remember, you know, when you're doing this kind of stuff that it is uh, water soluble or water, whatever you want to call it, water based. based. Um, okay, so now that that's down, I want to start with this flower. And I think I want to go, I think I'll go like this. I think I'll put that one right there. Okay, move up the back. And I think I'm just going to stick this this time. So maybe I can play around with the positioning of it a little bit. That looks good. And again, I'm just going to go over right on top of it. Now, I used to, um, when I first started this, I used to just put everything down and uh, come back and just do the whole page in this stuff. And then some of the times, though, my stuff would kind of shift, so I stopped doing it that way. All right, so, and as you can see, you see how it's kind of reacting. You can see it down here, too, um, how it reacts to the distress game. But that stuff doesn't bother me. All right, so let's play with this. I'm going to put this down first. I think I want it. 
kind of like that. And like I said, this is just a simple one. Just to have some fun and take, you know, take coloring and make it, you know, make something else out of it. Because sometimes, you know, when we just leave stuff in our books, it's like, okay, you know, I love my picture. And, you know, some of us, <clears throat> we, uh, we remove them from our books. We put them in frames. We hang them up. Uh, but I like, you know, and I like displaying my artwork too or putting it in my big book that I had showed you guys before. Put this back down. I like doing that stuff too. I just, uh, I also like to find different ways to use, you know, when we color, we put a lot of love and effort into it. So I like, you know, utilizing it in different ways if I can. All right, so I'm just going to do it like that. And I'm just going to go over it again. Okay. And you guys, I might be doing this all wrong, and it doesn't matter to me because it's it's mine, and I can do whatever I want with it, right or wrong. Okay, now this is the tricky part for me. Oh, that's something else I wanted to tell you guys. So any of you guys who paint your nails, because, you know, all the salons and stuff are, are not open. If you guys have a top coat that you recommend that actually leaves your nail polish on, please let me know. Um, like, I, I use my top coat. I use a base coat, my nail polish, and a top coat. And, like, I go over the edges. And um, my nail polish might, if I'm lucky, last two days after, you know, bathing kids and doing dishes. Um, it's just, it, it's horrible. So I'm just going to set this. All ah, right, there looks good to me. Put that there. It's kind of not where I wanted it because I wanted to put this flower here and now it's overlapping. But that's okay. I can, maybe I'll just throw it up there. All right, so I got my sticker down. Go ahead and do this piece. But yeah, my nail polish really just bothers me because it's always chipping. And I feel like I spend more time painting my nails than anything else. Now, this is this matte medium that I'm using. Like, I can write over it. I can draw over it. Um, but I'm trying, I'm kind of trying not to get it on the sticker too much. I'm trying. Okay, so this little thing is, I kind of want to use this. Um, I don't know if I like it. Eh, that's not bad. I'm going to go ahead and do it like that. I want to use this because I want to put the hashtag name on it. And I always, 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 always make a mess when I do this stuff. It's never neat. And that's kind of what I like about it. Because I don't have to be neat. I can just, you know, do whatever I want to do. All right, so let's get that extra gluey stuff off of there. And this stuff will all like dry clear and it'll look a lot better. And um, I do think, course when I want to find something I'm not going to be able to find it which is okay oh there it is I really like this glue um this glue I use for my miniatures this three-in-one beacon um but when it comes out it's kind of cheesy like like hot glue would be um but I like the way that it adheres stuff so I think I'm going to take this butterfly and these are um <clears throat> Tim Holtz, um, E stuff. God, I'm trying to think of how to say that word. Ephermia. Ephermia. Well, you know, but I'm going to kind of fold it in half. And I think I'm just going to stick it right in there like that. 
So I'm just going to put a little bit of this stuff. And when I use this, I kind of put a bead on. And then I do like, you know, one of those swirly things to kind of get the, the cheese off of it. Okay, I'm going to place it right there. I just hold it for a few seconds and it sticks. Um, what else do I want to do? I kind of want to do maybe oh, my, my strings all knotted up. Okay. Maybe a bow right there. Let's cut this. And I'm not going to keep them this long. <clears throat> Let me do it go right there. I use some of this glue. These scissors are not the best for this. I should have grabbed my other ones. And I really don't care if like my strings are even. That doesn't bother me either. And then I just take all the scraps and I put them back in there. So this is pretty much what I'm going to leave it as. Now I want to write a quote in here. And I think I'm going to use a Confucius quote. Now, don't judge my handwriting. Not all of us have really pretty handwriting. Get this up, put the lid back on my glue. And I'm going to use this at you spike pen because it's glittery and I like glittery. So I think I'm going to use that over there. Um, everything. has beauty but everyone can see it. Confucius. So that's pretty much what I do. And then when it's all said and done that. Now this is going to have to sit out. It's going to have to dry. Um, and if you wanted to, you can come back in like I need a little bit more goop right there. So one thing you got to do is make sure you get the edges underneath. Um, and after, you know, after everything dries, you can kind of come back in like this part's dry here. And come back in here. And you can play around with it just a little bit more. I should have my clipboard under here, but that's okay. And you can add more ink right on top of there. Bring it right up to your flower. I mean, there's so many things that you can, you know, you can still do. Maybe I'll add some to this. Like I said, I like things when they're just Kind of simple. Okay, so down here, let's make sure that's dry. I'm going to use my Arteza fine liner here. Oh god, I hope I can fit it. I'm so bad at like making things fit and it's always crooked, but that's okay. So I'm going to start with my M. Oops, this might not be dry enough. Nope, that's not dry enough either. So I guess I'm going to have to wait until that dries a little bit more. But I'm going to write, you know, monochrome chromatic here, just so I know what this is for. Make sure that's all sticky. But anyway, so when I'm done, um, now you can go through, and if it's still wet, you can actually file the edges with like a, just 
just like a nail file. Let me do it over here. And you can kind of file the edges like this. And then it just rips away. So this way it's not like a clean edge and it's right up to the edge. So I just kind of file them off. Or you could take scissors and you can, you know, cut around. Whatever way works best for you. But yeah, I just go right over that edge. And I only go one direction. Like if you go back and forth, it doesn't work as well. At least that's what I found. And then this one might not work that way. Okay. it's just like that so that is my finished piece like I said I need to let this dry write that in it feels dry but I don't think that it's not taking my Arteza pen very good oh, maybe I'm on. no oh Maybe tick. Put my little hashtag sign. And that's good enough for me. So yeah. So I'm just like I said, I'm just having fun showing you guys something different that I normally don't do on my channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I can't see what you do with your colors. So everybody, have a great day. And uh, I will see you guys all next time. Bye.